Hello, future Boilermakers, and welcome to our YouTube live broadcast for the School of Engineering Technology and the Polytechnic Institute at Purdue University. I just want to say first, congratulations to our admitted students, students who are viewers uh, tonight for our broadcast. Um, just this is a great chance for you to learn a little bit more about the Polytechnic and our School of Engineering Technology. So we're so glad you could join us for our panel discussion. Um, we have several faculty members, an academic advisor, and a couple of students with us tonight who, are, who will be our panelists. Um, and we have, uh, we'll have them introduce themselves here in a minute. Um, we also have several topics and some questions for our panelists that we'll ask them. But we also want to know what kind of questions you have and what you want to know as well. So you can submit those questions in the YouTube chat window. Um, John O'Malley, our technical director behind the scenes, and I will be checking that, that chat as we go through the, the broadcast tonight and bring those questions to our panelists as well. So go ahead and sign into your Google account if you need to and uh, type those questions in into that chat. Um, if you don't get if we don't get to your question tonight, we will we'll happily happily answer those questions. Uh, just send a follow up email to us at techrecruit at purdue.edu and we'll, we'll make sure we respond to your questions at that point as well. Um, so with that, I'll have our panelists introduce themselves um, with their name, their position in the college, maybe how long you've been here, um, your major that you're related to, um, and just a little bit, maybe a little bit about yourself as well. So we'll go ahead and go down the line that I see and we'll start with Alfonso. Hi everybody, I'm Alfonso. I'm from Andover, Massachusetts, so it's a little bit a ways away, um, but I'm happy to be here. I'm in uh, mechanical engineering technology. I'm on the uh, Grand Prix team, which is a go-karting event that happens every year here at Purdue. So we're very excited to race this year, and I'm very excited to be here. All right, thank you. Next up is Ann. Oh, Ann, you're, you're muted currently. I'm used to having it on. There you go. Uh, I'm Dr. Ann Luciato. I am faculty in mechanical engineering technology. Um, I am originally from Illinois and I've been in Indiana uh, on and off since for the last 10 years. Um, I actually help out with uh, one of the one of the initiatives in the department. Um, I'm also a faculty mentor uh, advisor for one of the uh, in clubs within the uh, university and I just try to get as involved as I possibly can. All right, thank you, Ann. Uh, next up is Brittany. Hello, my name's uh, Dr. Brittany Newell and I'm an associate professor in the School of Engineering Technology on the mechanical side. Um, I'm originally from Southern Indiana I've been at Purdue as a faculty member since 2015. Um, I've also been a student at Purdue, so I have that experience as well. Um, and another bit about me is I teach our introductory freshman engineering technology course and a later thermodynamics course. Um, and I also do research um, on primarily embedded sensors and actuators. All right, thank you. Next up is Amani. Hi guys, my name is Imani. Um, I am a double major. I am double majoring in mechatronics and robotics engineering technology um, with a certificate in entrepreneurship and innovation. I'm a junior here. Um, happy to be here. All right, thank you. Next up is Grant. Hello, my name is Dr. Grant Richards. I'm a faculty member in the in the areas of manufacturing and in electrical. Uh, I am actually a very unique uh, County in the fact that I did leave and I did find my way back to Purdue. It's such a great place to be. Uh, I I work with a number of student teams over the years. I've I've had a lot of different interactions with different student clubs and organizations, and um, I, I do a lot of international experiences with students as well. So in fact, we're leading a group to Germany here in in a few months. So a lot of fun things um, happen. All right, thanks, Grant. Next up is Jeff. My name is Jeff Richardson. I'm a, actually a clinical faculty member, so my primary focus is teaching. Um, work with Dr. Newell on the engineering um, technology first first year program, I guess you could call it first year courses. Um, have some exciting things going there. Um, my research is actually related to student motivation and student interest in learning and things like that. So very applicable to what we do. Um, originally, I don't think I said this from Indianapolis. So I made it all those 60 miles up the road and never left. Um, 
outside of that, I don't know if I said I teach uh, primary, primarily electrical and computer engineering technology courses. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is Ken. Hi, I'm Ken Burbank. I'm the head for the School of Engineering Technology. So our school has electrical, mechanical, industrial, and manufacturing engineering technology programs. And it's a very great place to be. I've been here now for, this is my 11th year here at Purdue, and, and I love it every day. So I hope you come and join us. All right, thanks, Ken. And last but not least is Tamara. Hi, my name is Tamara Grohl. I am one of the academic advisors in the Polytechnic and School of Engineering Technology. There are a total of six of us. We advise for all of the majors we have, and it's almost a dozen. So we keep pretty busy, uh, but we love talking to all of our students all the time, and it's a great place to be. Look forward to hopefully having you join us. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Um, so you'll hear from our panelists as we go through our, our topics tonight. And I think our first question we're gonna to get to, we'll start with Ken, actually. Um, I think one of the questions I get the most in different presentations and sessions from, from prospective and admitted students is related to um, the differences you'd see between uh, the College of Engineering here at Purdue and the Engineering Technology Program that, we are, that we're talking about tonight. So how would you explain and what, do you, what would you say is the different educational approach that we have within the Engineering Technology majors here in the college? Thanks, Ryan. You're, you're right. That is a very common question that we get. I think one of the most important ways to start this is to, to kind of separate out engineering. There's engineering, the profession, and then there's undergraduate degree programs that lead to that profession. So many of the folks here on the call tonight are engineers. We've got our various degrees and we've all worked as engineers in industry. Um, that is a title given to us by our employers in industry. That is not something that's stamped on us just because we took a certain course. So if we go then back and look at what's the difference between engineering technology programs and engineering programs preparing for that profession, um, it's really, it's a primarily a question of matching your learning style to where you want to be. Because by the way, people in mathematics and physics can also become engineers in industry and often do. But how people learn, especially if it's if it's something that needs to be hands on versus reading a book and then knowing how to do it are two very different things. And you need to understand that about yourself. It's a very difficult thing to look at in yourself, but I'm sure your parents, your teachers, probably even many of your colleagues can help you look at yourself and say, how do I learn best? Do I learn best in a lab or do I learn best more in the theoretical mathematical modeling of the world? Both are important. I'm not saying that by any means. Both are important. You need to match what your abilities are and what your goals are. All right, thank you, Ken. I think that that's a good way to understand that. And uh, Brittany and, and Jeff, I want to turn it over to you. And Brittany, we'll start with you because you mentioned the first year uh, courses that students will take in the engineering technology department. Could you kind of give us an explanation of what those courses are all about and how students kind of get their feet wet in the department? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the first the first courses that um, Jeff and I teach are engineering technology foundations. And all students in the School of Engineering Technology, no matter what your major is, um, and also we get lots of explorers too, um, will take this course. And it's it's an introductory foundations piece. So we touch a little bit of programming. We touch a little bit of operations, um, a little bit of circuits, a little bit of mechanical. Um, we talk about how to um, write technical assignments and reports. Um, we do several projects in it. Um, we have this course is set up to have two lectures and a recitation. And a recitation is basically a smaller group setting. Um, so where you work with either an instructor or a teaching assistant um, in, in that smaller group. 
Um, and then tied to that is um, a second course, which is directly linked, and it's a laboratory based course. Um, and so it has a, a two hour lab section that's associated with it, and it's very um, project um, oriented environment. So we try to link the, the theory, the things that we're talking about to the laboratory experiences. All right, Jeff, anything you want to add to uh, what Brittany was describing for us? As always, Brittany did a good job, but I'll, I'll add just a little piece to that. Um, the the electrical side of it, for instance, you start out a uh, couple weeks into the semester, you're actually building electric circuits and you're making measurements. Um, you're, you're learning how to use the test equipment. You're learning the lingo of the discipline. You're, you're hands on really doing stuff on the electric or on the mechanical side. You're learning CAD packages. You're actually creating 3D models of things. We have a CNC machine where you actually design a physical thing and then go machine it. And we're doing all of this at the freshman level. So first semester, um, as long as you're actually, you know, I, I don't want to say following the plan of study, but when you're in that course, you know, it, it's assumed you are a first semester freshman or uh, as Dr. Newell pointed out, we have students from across the university that come take this class to find out what is our majors, what's our discipline about. So we do touch on a lot of different things and we are building, soldering, wiring, you know, programming. We're doing all of this stuff hands on virtually day one. So it's actually a really cool experience. You find out pretty early on if you're in the right place and doing the things that you really want to do. So that's, that's very important. That's good to hear as well. And I see from behind the scenes, I can see Alfonso kind of nodding his head along with everybody as you're kind of talking. And Alfonso, you want to maybe share your experiences. You, you know, you're a freshman right now and you're taking or have taken these classes. Um, can you give us some, some examples of what you worked on in, in those courses? Absolutely. I had the privilege of having uh, Professor, Newell, professor Newell as my professor last semester. Um, and I went through both of those classes. The uh, I believe uh, 180, which is the classroom section, 181, which is the lab section. Um, so again, from day one, you were you were learning the skills and then you're applying them, which is exactly why I chose engineering technology as my major. Um, and I found out very quickly that um, that's exactly what happens. Um, so, I mean, for example, last semester, we started working with SolidWorks and the mechanical side of, of the labs. Um, and SolidWorks is a, a CAD system which you design something on the computer. Um, so we were uh, designing in the lab, uh, making everything work together. Uh, and then we actually got to mill it with a CNC machine. Um, so it's really cool seeing that process from start to finish. It's invaluable experience um, and obviously fun along the way. So uh, I definitely enjoyed it. All right, excellent. Thanks for confirming what our faculty are sharing. Um, and then, and um, could you share maybe a little bit about the courses you teach and what kind of projects and labs that are associated with with those courses as well? And then Grant will ask the, ask the same question for you as well. Sure, no problem. So I teach actually two courses. They come a lot later in the program, but it's something to definitely look forward to. Um, one of them um, is talks about moving water and fluids from point A to point B and and uh, we bring in experts from uh, different parts of that world. Um, we talk to folks who are involved with uh, public water systems, uh, wastewater treatment systems. Um, if it's possible, we go on tours of those plants so that you can actually be up close and personal with them um, and see some of the things that are going on. Um, the other course I teach, um, I try to limit its size so that we can actually really uh, dig deep and we take a look at how power is generated. Um, we look at the grid systems. We take a really close look at power generation. And a lot of my students, when they get done, um, you know, they've met a lot of people in the industry and they've been fortunate enough to even secure jobs based on uh, some of the folks that we run into. So uh, we have lots of opportunities. Um, Again, it's a little rough. You can't go into a power plant. Um, they're a little more on the dangerous side, so we don't actually go on the tour. But we do get to meet the fact we get to meet folks that work there. We talk to operators at nuclear power plants and uh, people involved with microgrid type um, electrical systems and um, all sorts of things like that. And so, um, you know, the opportunities are really endless. Thanks, Ryan.
All right, Grant, you want to share your, your sure. uh, what you're working on too? Uh, sure. Uh, we I end up teaching uh, several courses, uh, typically starting in the sophomore and junior year, and even into the senior year, all related around automation and automated systems that show up in 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 not only manufacturing but in a lot of other applications. And th these systems are are very unique in that um, they look familiar in a lot of aspects to devices that you use, but they have some unique properties and some unique ways of working with them that really give you um, some performance elements that that are key to making you know your world work um, whether it be transportation systems whether it be making you know phones and, and packaging things or um, even powering animatronics in, in Disney World uh, these these are very um, common systems that are in place but as we we're looking at where technology is driving our solutions we're finding that there's a lot of more tech that's being pulled into this and you start to see this merging of solutions that used to be kind of siloed just in industry are now merging with some of these tech platforms like cloud computing, augmented reality, and other elements including AI and machine learning. And they're all coming together in these unique converged and connected systems. So there are new skills and, and expectations when you go out in industry to be able to, to put these systems in place. And so we really do concentrate on working directly with industry and and technology providers um, to make sure that when you go out and you would graduate, that you're you're going to be positioned to be someone that's right on the leading ble leading bleeding edge of of what industry is doing and being able to employ that immediately. And so, um, you know, we we find that um, we're actually creating jobs when we talk to industry right now that aren't there right now. Um, they say that you know the trajectory that they need is at a certain point. So we've positioned so that our programs, as you work through over the course of your, hopefully four years, that um, you will land at a position that's just just becoming available and you will be um, in a, you know, a strong position in a new market. That, that is definitely good to hear. And I think that, that kind of reminded me of Amani. She, I think, just finished up an internship with Tesla this past semester. So I want to turn it over to her to kind of share a little bit about what that was all about, how the classes she took and the lab she was in here kind of prepared her for that as well, if you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah, so I just uh, got back from, so during the fall semester, um, I took, um, a, like, a fall, during the fall semester, I went over to Nevada to work for Tesla for an internship. I was there for the the full 16 weeks that I would have been in classes, and that 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 was such an amazing time being over there. I got exposure to the current technology and automation that's out there. I seen you know to, new technology being developed, like literally on the cutting edge of of what's coming out today. Um, but my classes that helped. Um, so given from day one, my classes are very in the polytechnic. They're very hands-on. They're very collaborative. Um, so with that, it, going over to Tesla, it was it was an easy transition to um, work with teams, jump right in, have those communication skills that's needed, be able to communicate effectively, you know, and with technical knowledge to a high level, um, and be able to pick up things quickly, as well as um, Grant Richards actually taught me my <laughs> intro to automation controls, which kind of gave me a one up when it comes to the interview and just having um, my knowledge or you know having knowledge coming in the door about at least the concepts of automation so definitely from day one I got exposure to automation controls the latest technology I got my interpersonal skills I got my communication skills um, just hands-on learning so it was it was an awesome experience um, and the polytechnic definitely helped prepare me for that all right, that's really cool to hear. I'm glad that was a good experience for you. I um, just want to pull in a question from our chat, um, and I'm not exactly sure who might be able to answer this, so raise your hand if you want to take it. Um, are there any spe specific computer requirements or recommendations that you have for students in engineering technology department um, that, you know, just to make sure that our students are prepared for, you know, if they want to get a, a new laptop or something like that coming into the program? So anybody want to take on that challenging question potentially? Tamara, you want to go ahead and pop it in on that one? Thank you. As an advisor, we get asked this question an awful lot. Um, our basic rule is there is no specific computer requirement for the Polytechnic. We recommend staying with what you're using as much as possible. That being said, 
if you are currently utilizing a Mac, it does need to operate like a PC would. So you will have to do whatever little magic conversions you do. And I'm not a computer person, so I don't know, but professors all know way better than I do. Um, what you need to do to make it work as an H as as a um, PC instead of a Mac. Um, we recommend as much memory as possible, as much um, ground, um, storage bytes. Sorry, I am not a computer person, so if somebody else wants to chime in with some of the more technical knowledge, but we recommend you don't have to go out and get the most expensive thing, but you should get something that's good that can do um, a lot of things. Um, but stay with your comfort level. I don't know if I really properly answered that question, but that's kind of sort of the advice that we give. Does that help? Yeah, Alfonso, you want to pop in with your student experience for this? Sure. So right now I'm using a Mac. Um, kind of regret it, but uh, we have RDP available, so you can remote remotely connect into any of the computers on campus with that software. It's just Microsoft RDP using the Purdue VPN. Um, so those are a lot of acronyms, but uh, you know, if you have a Mac, you're gonna need to kind of navigate that space a little bit. And there are a lot of online guides that Purdue provides that are, are step-by-step that will tell you kind of how to make that conversion occur. We also have uh, Citrix Connect. I'm not sure, it's, it's an online space in which the uh, apps are um, able to run native on your computer, uh, but not they're not necessarily stored on your computer. So regardless of your operating system, whether it be Mac OS or Windows, all of those apps are available to you. Um, from my personal experience, especially when I had to use CADing software, NX SolidWorks, all that had to be remoted into another computer on campus. So that is entirely dependent on your Wi-Fi connection, which is strong when you're in the dorm, but maybe not when you're in a very large lecture hall where everybody's trying to connect at once. Um, so definitely you're gonna be advantaged if you have a Windows operating system running native on your computer. Uh, but you can certainly make it work with a Mac. Yeah, Jeff, you want to pop in as well? Yeah, I'll jump in. It, it's the nature of the discipline. Mo for whatever reason, most of the computer packages that we use are Windows-based. And so it's it's not that we don't like Macs or we don't use Macs, don't have Macs. It's just the simple fact that the software that we use is Windows-based. And so if you want a Macintosh, that's fine. Um, as it's been pointed out, you just need to have some type of Windows machine that you can run on your, on, on your Mac so that you can run the Windows programs that we need. We have students that do it every semester. Um, they're, they're very successful in that. We have a few that struggle to get those things set up. I'm not a Mac user. I don't know how to do it. I, I've just never done it. But we do have a lot of students that are very successful at doing that. So you don't have to ditch the Mac, but we do have students that go out and buy new, you know, Mac books or whatever, come to campus all excited and then find out all the software is Windows based. So they, they tend to be a little disappointed in that, so. All right, well, that's good. Now we have some, some guidance and advice on how to, to navigate those spaces in the software as well. Um, all right, so I think we're gonna change topics a little bit, but kind of keep it on the idea of like the lab facility, the lab environment that we have here. Good questions from the chat, as well as one we already plan on talking about is the new gateway complex that is uh, opening in January of 2023. It's a shared space between the Polytechnic Institute and the College of Engineering. So uh, Ken, can you give us a little bit of uh, background behind that building and what kind of spaces and lab facilities are going to be um, available for students in engineering technology as that opens up just under a year from now? Ken, you're muted first, just real quick. Oh, almost. How about now? Good? There you go. All right. I thought I was holding the space bar properly. Um, so the, the new building coming online, in, in fact, you can very easily see it behind Grant's head there. Uh, and it's actually beginning to look like that now as we're getting so close to occup occupancy. We, we're going to have approximately 20 labs in that building. That is strictly allocated, if you want, to undergraduate education, both for our college and the College of Engineering. So it's some pretty exciting, open, lots of glass windows, um, elbow room space. 
for hands on learning for, for us. Uh, we have, I think, on the order of 10 electrical ET labs going in there are. I think 5000 speak. Yeah, 5000 square feet of space for our capstones will be in there. And another suite of four labs that are going in there are dedicated to our smart manufacturing major. Uh, Grant's been very involved with those, but there will be a new learning factory in there, a smart foundry, a new process lab, process engineering lab, and a new industrial Internet of Things laboratory going in there. So, and those labs will be able to be interconnected via the cloud, move data back and forth. So it's pretty exciting space. Um, and on the mechanical side, our machining centers and our plastic injection molding machines will be moving into that new space. Another thing that's very fascinating and probably most people on this video don't know it about, uh, we're also putting a new foundry in there. Um, foundry is a, is a facility for casting metal. So we'll have the ovens in there, the sand molds. Uh, so sort of like a 3D printing of most of us are familiar with, with plastic. We can also design and build molds and cast things in metal. So that, that's coming in there. Uh, Indiana is still a very large manufacturing state and a lot of foundry work is still done here, primarily for the automotive industry, but not strictly. So it's a it's an exciting facility. Lots of company interest. Um, I don't know. It's probably on the order of 15 to 20 companies meeting with us regularly. Grants intimately involved with that process as well. Helping us both specify new new machinery, but also. They want our labs to be test beds for them on new ways to connect their machines to other machines to uh, modernize use uh, industry 4.0 techniques. So pretty exciting, pretty exciting. We, we can really get jazzed up about this one. Thanks. Actually, uh, just a follow up for that. Um, you mentioned companies getting involved and in kind of doing some testing. Does that have any potential impact on uh, relevant internship experiences that our students can be able to find through those company partnerships? And Grant, I see you nodding your head. You might want to chime in on that one. Uh, yes, most definitely. So uh, as we as we are engaging with industries, both you know technology providers and end users, they're they're looking at at the way we're putting our curriculum together for for you know these new majors, especially smart manufacturing, and realizing that wow, these are students that are you know we want, and the requests have been out there. They they say how many of how many of your graduates can we get? And we're like well. Well, we'll have to we'll have to graduate them first, but I'm sure there's plenty of opportunities, and we we always have discussions on as you start to you know interact with with students. It's a good idea to provide internships and co-ops, and the response has been overwhelmingly yes. We want to do this. We want to make sure that we get students in to our facilities, into our environments and companies as quickly as possible, so they can understand our culture. They can understand kind of how our, our business philosophy and our and, and we work, and then they can learn about us. And hopefully when they do graduate, they're, they wanna come work with us full time for their career. And so internships and co-ops are um, quite commonly discussed. And if you had asked five years ago about the availability of internships, I would have said that's that's a little bit challenging, but given the environment in the in the skills and the demand right now, um, companies are very, very interested in, in looking at internships um, in ways that they weren't in, in the past. So it's it's there's a lot of opportunity um, to engage um, even after your freshman year um, with companies. Yeah, Mani saw you wanted to, to share something as well. Yeah, I just wanted to further emphasize. So like they, but me being out in the industry, so I worked for two different companies, stuff like automation as well as Tesla. So me being out in the industry um, and seeing how I work and seeing how much I know from being at Purdue, being in the Polytechnic student, they often ask me, hey, do you know anybody else? Do you know anybody else? So that I can, I'm able to send resume in because they see how prepared, Purdue has prepared me. So that, I just wanted to further emphasize that point. 
No, that's great. I appreciate you sharing that. that that's good. And then, uh, Ken, one other question related to, to Gateway I want to touch on is um, there any expected collaboration um, opportunities with the College of Engineering since that'll be kind of, you know, shared space or different spaces for both colleges involved in that, in that new facility? Well, there, there's sort of two parts to that. So, on the one hand, because it, this is undergraduate space for both colleges and both colleges are very large and growing, um, we need the space just to run classes. But there are many of these labs where we can overlap um, and do, and we, we worked with the College of Engineering, several departments in the College of Engineering in the design of the labs. Our new powertrain lab is a great example of that, where we'll have two or three engines and dynamometers hooked up so the students come in, can come in and study how the engines react on different fuel mixtures and different uh, parameters, if you want. Um, so that that course in particular is used uh, definitely for our MET major, but also in mechanical engineering, and I think Astro and Aero uses it as well. So, you know, it's, they're all Purdue students, so we, we don't mind working with each other. The new foundry that I discussed will be of interest to the material, uh, what is it, MSC, Material Science and Engineering Department, because they also do a lot of foundry work. Um, Brittany is actually from Ag and Bioengineering that does a lot of related work. And so it's, it's pretty easy for us to share back and forth because our, our students are going to work with each other and the faculty already do as well. All right, that's good to know, thank you. Um, so I have kind of a, a, a question from the chat um, that's kind of specific, but then I also wanna expand it out to just in general outcomes for our graduates. Um, so the question from the chat was, some, can someone from mechanical engineering technology go into the aerospace industry? Um, I don't know if anybody wants to specifically tackle that question. Go ahead and raise your hand and, and let me know. Um, and then just in, more in general, maybe if for the faculty members um, from your areas that you teach or from, from graduates that you've worked with, what are some of the, the fields and the, the areas, maybe companies, if you have any in mind, where our graduates have gone on to work for? So first part, mechanical engineering technology going into aerospace. Who wants to tackle that one? Amani, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I'll say, so going out into the industry is all about how you market yourself, right? So if you're MET and you want to go into aerospace, join aerospace clubs, join, have stuff that backs up the aerospace discipline on your majors. So when you talk to industry partners, they say, hey, like, I, you know, demonstrate that you know what you're talking about, regardless of the background that you have. So I just, it's all about how you market yourself. Yeah, Brittany, you want to go on? Yeah, I completely agree with what Amani says. Um, since I teach a wide range of, um, of our disciplines and majors, something I always tell the students is our curriculum prepares you to solve problems. Um, and that's what engineering technology does. And you can choose where you wanna solve those problems. So where you want that to actually be applied. Most problems in turn are really interdisciplinary um, and they have common tools and foundations that you need to use to solve them. Um, so my answer would be definitely. Um, and as Amani said, you can even train yourself and um, make yourself more um, fit, better fit basically for those companies. Hey, Tamara, you wanna go ahead and jump in too. Just to kind of come in on that as well, Brittany is absolutely correct. And we've had students go to a variety of different there is an industry that they have to split. Hey, Tamara, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I've had students go off to SpaceX. Tamara, can you can you hear me? Sorry, we're we're having trouble hearing your audio right now. Can you? I was wondering about that. Yeah, um, there we go. That's a little bit better. Is that better? Yeah. I was just saying that we well nope still still a little quiet i'm not sure what's going on there with your mic is your mic maybe covered up a little bit it's not but i'm on my phone and i had a call come in and that seems to have affected my ability to hear things as well well when, once you go ahead and you can sign out come back in and, and maybe that'll be a little bit better thanks 
Um, just and then I guess back to the more general question of outcomes. Where do you see graduates going? Um, anybody, and you want to pop in for that one? Thank you. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of my research on the students themselves, so I tend to look to see. And I also I also go after our our uh, graduates, and it's interesting. I've seen an evolution over time, and right now. I agree with what everyone's saying. It's how you market yourself. Um, we have students I talk to that share that they're working in companies that are contractors to NASA. Um, you know, the company got very excited because they heard that they had gone to Purdue. They almost didn't even care what major they were. It was kind of crazy. Um, but a lot of them, a lot of the companies are finding value in our degree. And they're and they're grabbing our students and and we have quite a few going all sorts of places. Um, aerospace is just one of them. I've seen a lot of our students go to national laboratories and get involved in some of the research. Um, I've seen a lot of them end up in automotive. There's a number of the companies that um, really, really want our students. Um, you know, we've also got and and what's interesting is over time, I've seen the titles change. Um, from just straight up engineer to engineering supervisor. Um, sometimes people are put out on manufacturing floors right away um, and they get right involved in, in the leadership on the manufacturing floors. So our students, it really has to do a lot with where they wanna be, how they wanna be there and how they write those documents, um, you know, that go in front of the employer. Um, and and it's, all, it's all in the marketing, right, Imani? Certainly. There you go. Okay. Yeah, Grant, want to go ahead and uh, and and perhaps I can add just a little more. So uh, yes, our our graduates um, end up in the Fortune 500 companies. They end up in roles from customer facing. I have many of my former students are in executive roles. It, there's the the and it's in a number of industries. It's not any particular industry. And probably one of the things worth touching upon is. Purdue is such a large institution that there are such a wide range of opportunities you can take advantage of while you're going through and studying. Um, extracurricular opportunities, opportunities to develop leadership skills, um, develop entrepreneurial skills. And so it's not just the curriculum that you're per se moving through, there's a lot of opportunity to find your own unique path that can help you get positioned and make you more marketable for that one core desirable, um, I guess, target that you're aiming for when you graduate. And so that's one of the benefits of a big campus is there's a lot of things you can do. And um, in fact, there's too many things to be quite honest. And, and finding those things that are, you know, most useful and most valuable sometimes get a little challenging for our students because there's so many opportunities to pick and choose from. All right, thanks, Grant. And, and Tamara, we have you back. You want to try to share what you were talking about before. Absolutely, and I'm probably just gonna be echoing what other people have said. There is an industry, am I better now? Can you hear me better? Awesome. I was just gonna say, there isn't an area, an industry um, that our students have not gone out there and made their mark on. Just lost my camera. Um, our students have touched everywhere. We have, um, I, I know personally, I have a student who went off and worked at SpaceX. We've had students go to Boeing and as one of the other people said, started with, I think it was Ann that said, started as, you know, an engineer, straight up engineer. And, you know, they're now senior, they're now consulting on major projects. They are now giving valuable input in a wide variety of areas. There truly is no limit to what you can do with your degree. All right, yeah, I think that's a that's a good common theme we've been hearing from everybody sharing about outcomes for graduates. So um, I think that's a that's a good sign if you ask me. Um, got a question in the chat um, for Jeff, and then I think I'll just kind of open this question up for everybody. Um, representing you know computer engineering technology, what are freshmen exposed to in their first year? Um, and then this second part is more general, I think, for everybody. What knowledge or experience would students in coming into the programs be expected to have, if any? <laughs> Uh, I don't think we actually expect them to necessarily have any prior knowledge coming in. Um, the two two experiences in the freshman year, uh, the ENGT courses that Dr. Newell and I teach, um, the, the students will start programming microcontrollers during that course. We'll actually use the Arduino environment 
So that's something that a lot of students are picking up um, in, in, even in junior high and high school, doing a lot of wonderful things there. So I wanna make sure that I, that I get this right, that using the Arduino environment is, is a great thing at that level as you progress through your 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 education if you go read the arduino literature it talks about it purposefully hides the details from you so that you can be successful at an early stage and and as you move through the program we need you, we need you in those details we got to drag you down into the weeds so that you really understand what's going on and so freshman year we'll use the arduino environment Second semester freshman year, I teach a, a microcontroller course where we actually use the C programming language and start writing real professional uh, microcontroller code using a high level language. Um, Arduino is based off of C, but it's not C. And so typically first semester freshman, I believe Tammy can, or Tamara can correct me if I'm wrong, take a C programming course. It's an intro course, which is a prerequisite to the second course that I teach. Um, so by the end of your freshman year, you're, you're learning to use microcontrollers. Um, as Dr. Newell pointed out, you're, you're solving problems. You're reading, you know, keypads, you're displaying information on LCDs, you're actuating, uh, solenoids, you're making motors turn, you're, you're doing all kinds of really cool stuff, um, at, in, in your first year. So to me, that's, that's really important and that's really huge sets the stage as you move through the program. Uh, we get into ARM core processors, so um, higher speed, higher performance computing systems that are capable of doing all kinds of things. We do a computer vision course, we have Internet of Things, We've, we just have lots of and lots of opportunities. It's a, it's a huge, huge area and growing exponentially for us as a, as a department. I think, yeah, that, I think all that is just a wide array of, of opportunities for our students. And I think the one thing to that second question I had about um, or from the chat of what's expected of our students, I think, you know, if everybody just wants to nod have, along with this, there's not ex any expectation of students to know any particular thing coming into the programs here, correct? You're going to learn it, you're going to be introduced to it and, and learn it all here. Um, and Jeff, you want to have a follow up to that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a very common statement that I make in our freshman courses. Um, if you already knew how to do this stuff, you wouldn't be here. So the, the expectation is that it's, it's our job to teach you this. So there, there is no preconceived notion that you already know how to do these things. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Um, we'll kind of turn the topic a little bit and, and get Tamara back in here in relation to kind of academic courses, plans of study, things like that. We, we obviously talked a lot about classes and things, but um, one question was, what are some of the courses that students will take that are outside of their major in, in engineering technology? And then along that same line, what are some minors that you might see students go into within the engineering technology programs? So the first question is, what are some courses that they take that are going to be outside of their major? Yeah, kind of like maybe like general education types of things or, you know, things that are part of plans of study, but out, not necessarily engineering technology specific. Got it. Um, Purdue does have a, what they call a core curriculum. So all students will be taking an introductory comm course, English course, a freshman composition course, a freshman speech course. Um, there's always a math requirement, um, science, physics, um, the MET students, as well as the me mechatronics and manufacturing students will take a chem course. It kind of does depend a little bit if it's going to be major specific in terms of specifically which courses, there's a statistics course requirement. Um, usually there's always a business selective of some sort, a management selective, because we do want you versed a little bit better. Gen eds are required at least two classes of gen eds, one in the behavior social science and one in the humanities. We do want you to be able to talk about more than engineering. You know, it's like, it's, it's great when you can do more. And for that reason too, there's also, in all of our plans to study an advanced comm course and an advanced English course that you will be taking because once you graduate, you've got a great degree, but if you can't talk about it, can't write about it, nobody's gonna know what you know. So we wanna make sure that you go out there well-prepared and well-versed. So there will be gen eds, there are tech selectives, which are a great opportunity maybe to strengthen an area of interest for yours, like computer science or computer information technology or computer graphics. There are several different minors. Many of them incorporate really nicely with the plans of study. 
all of it is always going to be an individual question as to, well, can I add on the minor without adding on time? Many times, yes, you can. It's not going to be a problem. We're going to find a way to make it work within your tech collectives, within maybe some of those gen eds. But there are going to be some times, and of course, if you bring in credit, you've just created more opportunity for us to put other classes into where those classes would be. So you have an opportunity to take more when you bring in more credit. Um, that being said, your advisor is always going to sit down with you. They're going to help you. They're going to come up with a plan for you so that you, you can see what it is you can do. Um, how much time maybe it will add if you want to do a dual degree. If you really want to add on that CS minor, it can take a little extra time because CS is specific about when you can take classes. But that being said, again, we're going to work with each student individually to help them do what they want to do, graduate hopefully when they want to graduate, and get everything they want from Purdue. So we're going to work with them. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. And the, one of the other questions was a computer science minor, and you touched on that a couple times. So yeah, that's that's definitely an opportunity for students here, um, along with several many 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 minors that are offered at the university overall, and not only not only within the polytechnic as well. Um, and one thing I do want to ask about is, and I think this is in general for the polytechnic um, internship slash professional work experience, and more generally requirement for the polytechnic. What does that look like for engineering technology? Um, and then uh, could you share a little bit about how we help our, our students find those opportunities? You want me to take that, yes? Sure, yeah, that's fine. So the um, there are several different ways to satisfy that, that internship uh, requirement. Of course, get an internship, go out, do the co-op program. Co-op program is an amazing opportunity for you to alternate study time and work sessions. You get really great work experience, oftentimes a permanent job offer from that company you're working with. Um, great opportunities to do a lot. You tend to move up because you stay with the same company with the co-op experiences. Um, but if co-op doesn't work for you, if the internships just don't quite work out, we have a lot of people who have other commitments during the summertime and they're not able to participate in an internship. We do provide a capstone experience. All students do have a capstone requirement. It is a year long industry sponsored Experiment, uh, experience, you're going to be given a real world problem from the company. You're going to work with representatives from the company. You're going to work with faculty mentors. Come up with a working solution for the company. You can you will present that then at the end of your capstone sequence. So this capstone experiences experience, which is two classes. Can either be taken fall, spring or spring followed by the fall, but they have to be taken consecutively. Um, that will also satisfy that professional experience that is required of all of our students. All right, excellent. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Amani because so you mentioned you've had obviously the Tesla internship and another one before. How did you find those opportunities? Uh, was it career fairs, information sessions, different recruiters opportunities? How did you connect with those industry partners that way? Okay, yeah. So um, how I connected, how I got my first internship my freshman year was actually by. Um, Going to the industrial roundtable, a lot of a lot of people say like you know freshmen don't hardly get internships. I said okay, I'm gonna go anyway. <laughs> so I went anyway. I had my resume looked at uh, by faculty prior to going, um, and once I got there, I just you know spoke confidently um, uh, with the with one of the companies there, and they actually gave me the chance. They knew that I was a freshman, and they knew that they would have to teach me, but they were willing to because they saw that I was. Um, bold enough to step out on and make that make that chance my freshman year and willing to learn. Um, so definitely I went to the career fairs. The industrial Roundtable was the one that I went to where over 400 companies come. This was pre-COVID. Hopefully when things get back, all those companies will come back on the Memorial, Memorial Mall again. But um, so I went there and that's how I got uh, connected with that internship. Um, furthermore, for my uh, connection at Tesla, it was actually through LinkedIn, believe it or not. This is why I pushed LinkedIn so heavy. So um, one of the recruiters at Tesla uh, posted the position on LinkedIn, and one of my friends from here, that's in NSBE, National Society of Black Engineers, um, they actually happened to know a Tesla recruiter. So once that position was posted, I, they said, apply for this, apply for this, I'll send your resume in. So I applied for it, they sent my resume in, and I got an interview request within like two days. So it's just so, Going to, being bold enough to step out and take that chance, 
and being honest about being willing to learn, um, even though you might not know some things, and then uh, using social media to your advantage. How I got my obviously. I hope I answered that correctly. Yeah, absolutely. And Tamara, you want to add something else as well? Yes, I was going to say there are quite a few opportunities to help students find that first internship or find an internship permanent job. We have the Center for Career Opportunities, which is an amazing place to go to. They can give you resume help. They can give you interview help, um, help you develop that 30 second elevator pitch. They keep a calendar of all of the career fairs and Purdue is fortunate. We have a career fair probably at least once a month. Um, there's somebody, there's some career fair someplace on campus. You can go to any career fair you want to. We have our Polytechnic career fair coming up actually this week on Thursday, which I'm really excited about. Uh, we're back on campus again, and so I'm really excited to also go to it um, on Thursday and see the other companies that are going to be there. So we do our best. Also, I will say as advisors, just like Imani said, sometimes it's word of mouth. Our students are our best advertisement. Um, they are our best, they're one of our best contacts. Companies see them, they contact us, they say, we want more like them. We've got an internship, what can we do? As soon as we hear about it, we send it out. So there's a lot of information that will get sent out as well. Mind you, mind you it's not every day, but there are great opportunities out there and we try to share as many of them as we can with as many students as we possibly can. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the career fair because I was going to mention it myself as well. And actually, we have a career fair guide that I'm going to say or share into the chat here in a second. Um, we'll link to that website, kind of see all the different companies that are coming through for this year. Um, as well as on our YouTube channel, there's a video called Uniquely Qualified, where we interviewed recruiters from companies, asked them why they look to hire graduates and, and students for internships in the Polytechnic as well. Um, so that's a great, great kind of snapshot of what a career fair looks like and what kind of companies are at those, those opportunities as well. Um, turn it back to Alfonso because we haven't heard from you in a little bit. Just kind of get a sense: what kind of uh, student involvement opportunities do you have, both within your your major and in the Polytechnic, and things you're doing outside of that? And then, um, Amani, same question for you when when Alfonso finishes up. Absolutely. So I forgot to mention this. I'm in the engineering technology learning community, which means you um, you live with or in close proximity to uh, guys and girls who are not necessarily in the same major, but in a major in engineering technology. So it's really useful to go down the hall and say, hey, I have a question about this question on the homework. Um, and it's, it's it's great support system and we have great uh, events that we do as a learning community. So would highly encourage you to to look into joining uh, the, uh, the learning community. Um, but uh, in addition, there are a lot of opportunities Purdue offers just in general. Um, and you're not gonna be able to do them all. But um, we, we have uh, club fairs that occur at the beginning of each semester, I believe. So it's a great way to kind of look around, see what you're interested in, um, see what you want to get involved in. Um, and again, employers love seeing demonstrated interest. Um, so would highly, highly recommend getting involved. So again, as I mentioned before, I'm on the Harrison Grand Prix team, uh, which is for my residents all participating in the Grand Prix team. Um, and I want to go into the automotive industry. So, um, you know, working with cars, not, I mean, they're go-karts, but, uh, again, it's good experience, uh, working with cars on a, uh, bi-weekly, tri-weekly basis, uh, just really good experience working on a team, teamwork. Um, and, uh, in addition, uh, I've been involved in the electric vehicle club. So again, it's like exactly like the Harrison Grand Prix team, only electric and electric is better in my opinion. Um, so again. Uh, a lot of great opportunities, um, a lot of opportunities to demonstrate your interests, which really not only looks good on a resume, but allows you to have a little fun along the way um, and gain some great experience. All right, awesome, so, thank you. Brian, can you say the question again for me? Just to make oh sure. yeah, uh, what kind of student or organization clubs, okay. things you're doing outside of the classroom that you're involved in on yeah. campus? Yeah, so I'm actually a member of a few clubs. I kind of do a lot, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> so I'm a, me a member of Women in Technology, um, so it's just a community. I was in this, it was a living community, li a living community too, a learning community where you live in with them. Um, so what they do is just an organization of just trying to, it's just an organization of women in the polytechnic and engineering technology specifically. It's just trying to create community in a safe space and um, a place for us to network um, and just, you know, find a community in the polytechnic. 
Beyond that, I'm a member of MTA, which is the Minority Technology Association. With them, we focus on creating a safe space for the minorities on campus, not only a safe space, but just promoting academic awareness, uh, professional development, all that for the minorities here on campus. Um, I'm also a Polytechnic Ambassador, which is how I'm in this meeting right now, uh, where I get <laughs> where I get to um, talk to all of you guys and just uh, share my passion for not only the Polytechnic, but what I do here, um, Purdue as a whole. I also help out with FRI, which is the, the female, female Recruitment and Retention Initiative here at Polytechnic. And we focus on not only getting females here, but to keep them here longer than uh, their one semester. So we try to create bonding activities and create community within them. And uh, the last one I'm gonna mention is the uh, boiler tracks. So that is a minority focus group um, focused on the recruitment of the minorities um, here at the Polytechnic. So it's more of like an outreach, uh, make them feel welcome, get them here. And, you know, it kind of leads into MTA, which is once they're here, you know, keep them here <laughs> or fry women. Once they get them here, keep them here. So a lot of outreach, different organizations. Um, that's what I'm a part of here outside of studying. All right, awesome. Well, lots of lots of great opportunities to get involved. I think that there's over a thousand clubs and student organizations at Purdue. Um, I think it's is a it boiler link. That's the student organization website. You can take a look at and see everything that we're doing here, um, and and lots of ways to if you wanted to even start your own club as well uh, once you get here on campus. Um, the one one last question I want to get to you um, before we kind of wrap up here, um, and I think Tamara, this is maybe more for you. Is is it easy to switch your major? to something within the Polytechnic, and then same question for something outside of the Polytechnic as well. Absolutely and no. Um, it kind of depends what it is that you want to do. To make a switch, for example, between mechanical and electrical, that can work, and that's not going to be a problem, and you're probably not going to lose any time. Um, some of the basic classes, of course, you know, will transfer across many different majors. Some majors have specific math requirements and so if you are interested in a major that might have a different math requirement talk to your advisor make sure that you are taking the right math class you don't have to repeat that um, the goal is obviously not to repeat so we do our part we do our best to make you know major changes as easy as possible um, i know you know we see a lot of a lot of students switch over to us and we do our best to get them out in as close to time as possible. Sometimes, depending upon when you make the switch, making the switch earlier is always better than later. That way you are taking the classes you wanna take. So conversations with your advisors are always important. We don't read minds. Um, we wanna do our best to help. You know, uh, if you feel that, oh, you know what, maybe I'm really a little bit more with industrial engineering technology than I thought it was, or I really, think I'd like to do computer graphics. We're going to work with you to get you over to that game design major you think you're, you know, you think you might be a better fit with because it's your degree. We want to get you where you want to be. So talking to your advisor is key and really kind of don't don't wait on this decision. Don't think, oh well we often will do as much as we can to make sure that you can walk maybe both paths and you, while you test out the new major, see if you like it. We're also gonna have you take classes still within your current major because sometimes, you know what, the new major isn't what you think it is and you realize, you know what, it was just that one class here. I really love what I'm doing here. I've gotten into it. I know what I'm doing now. This is really where I belong. We're gonna do our best to make sure that you can kind of test both worlds while you make your decision. So it's easy, hard, yes, no, talk to your advisor. That's hey, what we're there for. Talk to your advisor might be the go-to response for a lot of questions that you might have. And Anne, you wanna add something else as well? I do actually, um, I've done a lot of studies um, looking at students and just trying to figure out how many changes are made and that kind of thing. and and where people go and where they come from. And actually on average, everybody changes once. Oh, you were twice. Oh no. Now I was, when I studied the engineering, engineering technology students, they changed on average across the country once. So 
that should be a relief to those who are a little concerned about that because it does happen and people come from all over the place and they go all over the place so it's actually kind of interesting yeah tamara anything else one more thing you want to add Yes, I was going to say too, sometimes what can also be a good thing, students think they might want to try something out, maybe picking it up as a minor. You might think you kind of want to maybe do a dual degree with business. Let's start with the minor. Let's see what you think about that. Let's give you a taste of what those classes are like and let's see how deep you really want to go with it as well. So again, just another way to think about kind of looking at additional classes and additional areas of interest. It's overwhelming. There's so much to do. There's so many choices to make. But again, work with us. We're going to work with you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I think that that'll about wrap up our discussion uh, tonight. So I want to say thank you to our viewers for joining us and submitting questions in the chat. Um, hope we get, got a lot of good information and insight about our School of Engineering Technology here at the Polytechnic. Um, thank you to our amazing panelists for sharing their insights and their experiences with the college as well. Um, thank you to John O'Malley, our technical director behind the scenes, working uh, in the chat and posting some graphics for us as well. Um, as I mentioned before, please feel free to send us an email to techrecruit at purdue.edu if you have any additional questions about the department, about the Polytechnic, or Purdue in general. Um, if you're able to come to campus for a producer me event there are eight actually nine dates available starting this coming monday so um, visit our admitted student page and you can find out all about the different event opportunities on campus uh, virtual opportunities we have actually a zoom chat session coming up this uh, monday evening for students admitted to engineering technology we'll have student ambassadors from engineering technology majors there as well so you can sign up for that um, again that's all on our admitted student page um, and you can also rewatch this broadcast a little bit later on go by going to polytechnic.purdue.edu slash live. Um, so just a quick reminder, though, um, you have to accept your offer of admission to Purdue by May 1st. Um, and please feel free to contact us with any questions you have about the, the college decision process. Um, anything you want to know, again, about the Polytechnic, Purdue, or Engineering Technology, we are happy to help. Again, that email is techrecruit at purdue.edu. So just a quick thank you again for everybody here tonight and our viewers at home. Um, so have a great rest of your night and boiler up.